Welcome to the online course Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management. I'm Dr. Jiang. Today, we're going to have a look at Chapter 2, Efficient Capital Market. Now, let me bring you this idea of what we mean by efficient market in finance. So it's different from price efficient. What we talk about is actually information efficient. Now, information efficient indicates that the current price is a true reflection of all the available information. While a price efficient market indicates that the price is a true reflection of its intrinsic value. Now, keep that in mind. Let's have a look. The first one, why should the market be efficient? And why is that important? And also, does the market have only one status or one form of efficiency? And third, how can we determine if a market is in a certain form of efficiency? And lastly, if the market drifts away from being efficient, what might be the cause behind that? Okay, so the first learning object. Why should the market be efficient. So what might underlie this, let's say, this outcome? So the first premise or the first condition, that's the base condition, is that there's a, a lot, a great number of active investors who constantly analyze the information regarding a certain security. And then they make their investment decisions independent of each other. Second, the new information comes to the market in a unpredicted, unpredictive, and let's say things that cannot be foreseen. So the new information comes to the market with a random fashion. So no one can have a first start. No one can predict the timing or the content of this information. So that's the second premise. Now the last premise is more like a joint outcome that are resulted by the first two premise. So it states that profit maximizing investors cause the security price to adjust rapidly to the release of new information. So the information are reflected in the stock price instantly once it was being released. Now, if all the three premises are kept to be true, what do we expect as a result? So the first one would be the security price change is totally independent and also random. Why? Because first, the stock price change is led by a change in information. So it moves in a random way. And also, the stock price change are actively, are, or let's say, activate by shareholders, by investors, and investors' investment behavior or trading behaviors are independent of each other, which cause the price to be independent and random. Now the second one. So what we can expect is that if the three premises are kept to be true, the market turns out to be an information efficient market. So the current price is a true reflection of all the available information regarding this security. And lastly, we can expect that investors' rate of return are consistent with the perceived risk of this security. Now, pay attention to the use word here. That's perceived risk. So perceived risk is based on what? It's based on the available information regarding this security. So that's what we are talking about here, the perceived risk. The judgments are made by investors. The investors make a true and justified reaction to the information they receive. So that is why we think might lead to an efficient market. 
and the market needs to be efficient because if it wants to move in a very functional and justified way, they have to keep all these three premises. So, we have some hypothesis regarding the efficient market. So, that means that if we believe the market to be efficient, what we might observe in the reality world, or, you know, what is practical in terms of investment strategy. The first hypothesis, which is a relatively earlier theory, that's random walk theory. So that random walk theory indicates that the change in stock price occurs randomly. So let me refresh your memory. Why the stock price change is random? It's because the information that trigger this change is random. So that is why the stock price change is random. Now, what this theory indicates is that regardless of the investment strategy you use, if you even get any positive abnormal returns, it wouldn't be out of skill. It would be out of luck. So the best strategy you can follow in a random walk hypothesis is just to buy and hold. Now, the second, a, let's say, a slightly more recent hypothesis is the fair game model. So what we mean by fair is that what we get in return is consistent in terms of what we're undertaking in risk. So no one can have the superior return, meaning that no one can bear two units of risk and get three units of return. No, we get what we plant, we harvest what we plant. So that's what we mean by fair. So we get a fair reward based on the risk that we undertake. Now, the more recent hypothesis regarding market efficiency is developed by the respected farmer, and he won a Nobel Prize because of that. So it is the famous three forms or three status of market efficiency. Well, let me give you a spoiler alert. They are weak, semi-strong, and strong form of efficiency. So they are the sub size regarding the market efficiency, which will be the content of our next session. All right, thank you. See you in our next video. Bye-bye.